cue the Rocky music because Drago has entered the building. The defending state champion Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears continue their title offense tonight from Mason City, Iowa at Mason City High School. It's the 22-1 Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears rolling after another impressive regular season and a 71-50 win over St. Ansgar on Friday night. And they're greeted by the scrappy challenger, the 23-1 Riceville Wildcats. The Wildcats have a pen in their right hand and they're trying to write a different finish to the story than last season. Good evening, everyone. Tyler Lance with you on Home Country Radio and the Algona Radio YouTube stream. And what a night of basketball action we have for you. It's the regional final for the second year in a row. Bishop Garrigan against Riceville. And the Wildcats are revenge-minded. They're having their best season in program history, tied for the most wins in school history of 23. And they're looking to do what they didn't do last year, knock off the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears. But it won't be easy as a Golden Bear team with more depth than last season, better shooting, and two superstar players with Audie Crooks and Molly Joyce taking it to a whole new level. One of these teams is going to Wells Fargo Arena as we are down to the final 16 teams in Class 1A and eight of them will still be standing after tonight. So big night of basketball action here on Home Country and the Algona Radio YouTube stream. Quick note, if you are looking for the Algona versus Humboldt boys basketball game tonight, we'll have a separate stream up for that here shortly and that'll be on our sister station Hometown Radio 92.7 FM as Brian Wilson and Greg Stewart will have the call in that one. But right here, it's the 22-1 Golden Bears. It is the 23-1 Riceville Wildcats both state-ranked teams in Class 1A, and one of them is going on, and one of them is going home. We'll take a quick timeout, check in with both head coaches ahead of tonight's game, coming up next here on Home Country Radio and the Algona Radio YouTube live stream. The sports season is upon us, and we're here to help make it the best one yet. This is Shane Meschke, physical therapist at Kasuth Regional Health Center. Don't let sore muscles, tightness, aches, pains, and injuries get in the way of achieving your goals. Our therapy staff is here to help you get back to peak performance. Working closely with the doctors and healthcare staff, we take a team approach to create a recovery plan personalized for you. We will be here for you. Welcome to Premier Pizza, the place to go when you're looking for delicious pizza and Mexican selections all in a fun, casual, and accommodating setting. They want to thank their customers for coming to their restaurant in the best way they know how by making sure that your experience there is the best it can possibly be. They never forget that each person has the choice in where to dine and feel privileged each time you choose Premier. Come by Premier Pizza and prepare to be amazed. High school basketball action tonight as it's Bishop Garrigan against Riceville. And right now we're joined by Riceville head coach Darcy Fair. Coach, first of all, thank you very much for joining today. If you want to start our listeners off, listeners off with a recap of your most recent playoff game as you guys defeated West Hancock 53-42 on Friday night. So how would you recap that win for your team? Um, I think it was a solid team win for us. You know, we came out and did some great things, played some solid defense. Um, we rebounded really well in that game. Um I think we kept our composure. Um, there were some times that the game was pretty close, you know, at, at tied at halftime and really came out in that second half, third quarter, and into the fourth quarter and played some solid basketball um, together. Like the girls stayed calm and collected and um, came out and did what they needed to do to be successful and earn the win. And coach, during that game, sophomore Kylie Dvorak was really the hero as she hit four three-pointers during the fourth quarter. And she's really not one of the team's leading scorers necessarily if you look at average scoring, but she came off the bench. She was ready to fire away and really help the team to that win in the fourth. So can you speak a little bit on her composure there and just put her night into perspective? I think Kylie has come in and played some crucial minutes for us throughout the season. Um, she might not always necessarily be one of our top scorers, but she comes in and plays some solid on-ball defense. Uh, she played some varsity minutes last year as well as a freshman and did some JV playing for us this year as well throughout the season. Um, you know, she's one of the girls, especially in that sophomore group of ladies who have, they've all put in lots of time, but that, that core sophomore group of girls have put in a lot of time together. And I don't think she probably came in feeling a lot of pressure. She was sick that night. Um, so I think sometimes, you know, I don't know what the physiological things are all about that, but, um, you know, she wasn't feeling the best. And so I think, you know, I've heard people say, like, they have their best games when they're not feeling good. So I don't know if she just was more relaxed and wasn't really necessarily feeling that pressure, but came in and did what she needed to do. You know, she sunk, uh, sunk some that were unguarded threes. You know, she had plenty of time to shoot. She had another one that was definitely um, hand in her face, um, made that basket. You know, it's um, and it all comes from a good pass, right? Like 
he doesn't get that shot if our team doesn't get a good pass or like a good rebound. You know, so it's um, we talk about that a lot as a program that yes, that person might get those points, but it's set up by all the other things that everyone else on the court is doing, and so it's a collective, um, a collective thing. You know, somebody saw that somebody maybe got a, you know, helped us um, get prepared for the opportunities that we've been able to have this year, and I think that's a a testament to like what those girls are willing to sacrifice for each other, like. Maybe I'm not going to be the point scorer this game, but I'm willing to give the ball up to my teammate. So I think that's that's a great a great thing that these ladies try to do together. Right now we're talking with Riceville head coach Darcy Fair. And coach, I'm interested in how you're approaching this game mentally with the girls as you face Bishop Garrigan in tonight's matchup. And, you know, I think there's a we have to face Bishop Garrigan again versus we get to face Bishop Garrigan again. If that we get to face them being the, you know, we can correct our mistakes from last year. We can learn from the past and try to change the result this season. So I guess when you approach this game mentally, how do you make sure it's we get to face Bishop Garrigan rather than we have to face Bishop Garrigan? You know, I think there's been a lot of ebbs and flows as far as, like, emotions about where we are right now. But, you know, just like I've had tons of people come to me and say, like, oh, this is what you should do or this is what you should do or giving us suggestions about how how to play um, this game. And, honestly, we're going to be us. And that that's the best thing that I can say. Um, I don't – I mean, I appreciate everyone giving us advice or suggestions, but, you know – we are where we are currently because we have been who we are as a team, and I feel like that's the best the best thing for us. You know, um, I think I've learned in my past years, this is my third year as a head coach. Um, I was a co-head coach for three years prior to that, and then I was an assistant for three years. But, you know, I've learned that you you can't be something that you're not. You know, so people – can provide us with um, suggestions and what they think would work best. But I just, I focus on us and what we can do fundamentally and do it right. I guess that's my philosophy. So I don't know if that answers your question or not, but um, that's just kind of my mindset. And I think the girls' mindset too, like be us. That's who we are. And that's where we've gotten to where we are because of that. So we'll keep focusing on Riceville girls basketball. Yes, absolutely. And coach, when you look at some of the returners from last year's team, what do you feel they learned from last year's playoff run and specifically last year's game against Garrigan that they're taking with them into tonight's matchup? You know, honestly, Riceville girls basketball five on five had never been in that situation before. We know we'd never made it to the regional finals ever in the history of Riceville girls basketball. And so it was something new to us, right? Like, um, playing in a bigger facility, you know, all those pressures that come along with being in that game. You know, even myself, sometimes I catch myself thinking, man, like we were in the game to go to state. Like sometimes I don't know if it always like sinks in, like how um, how, how well we had done sometimes. That might seem, I don't know, foolish, but, you know, you were, we're just playing another game, I guess, is kind of what our mentality is. You know, we're playing another game. Like don't maybe let all the – hoopla that goes along with um, these big games um, and, like, interfere with what your mindset is and what your goals are um, and taking care of the ball and things fundamentally. And so I think that's kind of our focus point this year of just, you know, staying calm, cool, and collected and doing the things that we've been doing well over and over um, each possession to the best of our ability. And if we do make a mistake, which is going to happen, right, like obviously Bishop's going to score, like we know that, like we know people are going to come out and like, you know, I mean, you have people that are averaging lots of points, so we understand that, you know, but how can we as a team um, be our best fundamentally um, in, in that competition? So I think that's kind of our mindset this year. Worry about what we do. And Coach, along those same lines, what do you feel are going to be a couple of the biggest deciding factors in this ball game? I mean, you know, obviously some things are going to have to fall for us. You know, we have to make some outside shots, um, which has been happening here currently for us. You know, we've been shooting pretty well. Um, we're going to have to play solid defense. I mean, that's in any contest with any team that you play. Um, we are also going to have to have great communication, you know, not only from our players that are on the floor, um, the, the five that are out there, but even communication from our bench, helping our girls defensively you know um having a active bench i think is important uh, staying focused and not letting um not letting ourselves kind of lose our 
our our focus for the night. You know, I think we have to keep our nerves calm and in the right direction and kind of use those, you know, sometimes you get pretty nervous before games, but if you can channel that nervousness into something positive on the court on both ends, I think that'll be a thing we need to kind of focus on as well. Um, and I think that's probably the, the main things for us. You know, we're going to have to rebound well, shoot well. I mean, like any any game that you play, right, it's the, the next game, and we talk about that a lot. Um, all the fundamentals that we need to do, you know, playing defense with our feet, not getting, getting in foul trouble, and um, being able to read the floor when we have open teammates and doing our best to work as a collective unit. You know, we've that's been a common thread for us this year, too, you know, pursuing excellence as, a, as, a, as players and as people in a program and um, playing like a fist, you know, where all five people that are out there are working together and so um, I think that's kind of our girls' mindset and hopefully those things will help us play well. Well, Coach, as we wrap up for today, the team right now is looking for their first five-on-five state appearance in program history. Can you put into perspective what a win in this game and an appearance at state would mean to this group of girls and to the Riceville community? Um, well, you know, we, we have um, like one of our first weeks of practice, we have player coach meetings and just talk to the girls about what they're individual goals are for the season and what their team goals are for the season. And then we talk to them like midway, like on a bus trip, you know, and like say, how you doing? Reaching those goals, like um, where are you at right now? Like what can we do to help you? What do you need to improve on? Just kind of guiding them through the season and not only individual goals, but, but team goals. And I would say at the beginning of our season back in November, that's, that was a goal for most of the girls, you know, um, make it to state. I think, that's their mindset right now. I mean, we obviously know that that's um, quite an achievement, but I think if we could attain that, obviously, like for any program that makes it down there, it would be phenomenal for us. Um, Monumental, maybe that's a better word. Uh, And not only for us as a program, but for our community. We have a huge backing. I feel like, you know, we only have, like in our senior class this year, we have like 18 kids, (laughs) you know, so our, our, school is not huge you know and so like when we have home events and things like that it's a very community rallied um support in the stands and um we've tried to give back to those fans this year as well um and i think they appreciate that and we recognize them we had an alumni night this year um we had a bake sale that we gave money back to our local fire department and ambulance services. Um, we recognized Riceville's first ever championship team for girls basketball was in back in 1963. And so like just a lot of um, ways for us to give back. Uh, and I think it's good for the girls to know that it's not just about basketball. There's a lot of other things that we need to be able to do as a program and give back to others. And if we could make it down there, I, I feel It'd be a community win, not just a Riceville Girls basketball win. Well, Coach, we appreciate your time today. Best of luck in tonight's matchup. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That is Riceville head coach Darcy Fair as we come back with more next. The Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union encourages positive behavior. Pride, respect, leadership, and sportsmanship on the court and in the stands. Remember what a great privilege it is to see your team compete. Thank you for your attendance. Enjoy the game. And enjoy the game. And we continue on with the pregame show here on Home Country Radio and the Algona Radio YouTube stream. As right now we're talking with Bishop Garrigan head coach Brandon Schwab. Coach, first of all, thank you very much for joining today. If you want to start us off here for recap of your most recent playoff game on Friday night over St. Ansgar, a 71-50 win for the team. Uh, What were a couple of your takeaways there coming out of that matchup? You know, I mean, we I thought we came out with good energy, and, uh, you know, we, we won each quarter. Um, you know, they're a very nice team with a good post player inside. And, you know, they hit shots. I mean, I, I mean, we have, you know, they shoot 35% from the field on the year, and I think they were like 65% on the game. I mean, so they hit shots, and uh, credit to them, they played really well in a tough, packed environment at Garrigan. But uh, our, our kids did enough to – you know, get a 21-point win and, uh, and and move on to the next round, and that's the most important part right now. 
And coaches will be the second straight year that you face Riceville in the regional finals. How do you compare the team that you're seeing this year from Riceville to maybe what you saw in last year's regional final game? Well, you know, a lot of them same players are back. Um, a, lo- a lot of them uh, great players are back from the two Barron sisters are back. And uh, um, the Fair, uh, Talati Fair and the Weberdeen. And a, lo- a lot of them girls are back from last year. They're, they're better than they were last year just because they're a year more experienced. You know, uh, they, you know they've, they've got a solid six players that, uh, without much of a drop-off, they all hit the three. They all can handle the ball. They all play very good defense. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a hard game to prepare for because everybody can score on their team. Everybody can shoot the three. Everybody uh, can defend at a high level. So, uh, you know, we've got our hands full in a, in, in a pressure situation tonight, no doubt. And coach, looking at Riceville, it does appear they like to play a lot of man-to-man defense. So, do you expect them to go man against you tonight? And if so, how do you want to approach that offensively? You know, I, I expect them to go man. I think it's kind of what they do. Um, if you look at when we played them last year, um, they went man against us too, and really just cheated in and fronted Audie in the post and got that sandwich. We were fortunate enough to hit some early first quarter shots last year that kind of uh, got us a comfortable lead um, to make them come out on. Uh, on us but uh you know they're a very solid team and uh you know we've got to attack them and we've got to make all of their girls play defense you know we've worked hard of our guards setting up um our other guards for shots and uh really make sure we're getting ball reversal and uh you know we've worked hard on that uh, uh the last few days in practice so hopefully we just get a little more ball movement tonight and uh execute our stuff and coach, along those same lines, obviously a big part of the offense is going to be getting Audie Crooks her fair share of touches during the game, but another big part is going to be getting that three-point ball hot in this ball game. So when you approach getting open three-point shooting looks versus, say, a two-three zone versus man-to-man defense, what are a couple of differences of how you approach the offense there? You know, we just have to get in the gap against any zone. We've got to find the gap. And, you know, we can't limit ourselves to just ball reversal. You've got to put dribble penetration on and put pressure on the defense to come in and you're going to have your kick out. You know, um, we, we've got to put more dribble penetration on the defense early on in the offense and really attack gaps and be able to kick out for ball reversal than in, into Audi, you know, um, or inside-out threes. We haven't had a ton of inside-out threes where Audi catches it, reverse pivots, kicks the opposite wing. We nail that three or go right back inside. You know, I want to see a little more of that tonight. Well, Coach, as we wrap up for today, what's going to be the final message to the girls before tonight's ball game tips off? Bring energy right off of the tip and, and, and really get after them defensively. We want to make things tough on them defensively. Um, we, we, we don't want threes to hurt us, so we're going to really extend on the three-point arc and really uh, make sure the, the, that threes don't hurt us tonight. So we just want to see us get off to a good start and, and, and really play to the level we can. Well, Coach, best of luck in tonight's game, and thank you very much for the time today. Thanks, Tyler. That is Bishop Garrigan head coach Brandon Schwab here on the pregame show. We'll take a time out and come back with more next on Home Country Radio and the Algona Radio YouTube stream. Live at Mason City High, it is regional final basketball time. The 23-1 Riceville Wildcats, the 22-1 Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears. I'm Tyler Lance, my partner's Beanie Bodie. Beanie, your final thoughts before tip-off. Oh, let's just hope there's no jitters in this game. There's been two days of no school. The weather's cold outside. It's a game to go to state. Anything can happen in this game. I just hope the Bears bring their A game tonight. And if they do, they should make another trip down to Des Moines against this Riceville team, which is going to give it everything they've got. Here we go, Tyler. Riceville wearing the black uniforms with the red lettering. Bishop Garrigan in the whites. Riceville has Madison Bauer, Jalen Barron, Joy Barron, Talati Fair, and Samantha Wilberding. Bishop Garrigan has Molly Joyce, Abby Capacious, Zoe Montag, Ashlyn Hovey, and Audie Crooks. At midcourt, it's Crooks and Barron. Crooks wins the tap. Hovey's got to chase it down before it goes out of bounds, and she collects it in the backcourt as we are underway from Mason City High School. Golden Bears head from left to right on the radio dial as Joyce handles the ball. Joyce driving initially and backs it out and gets it to Capacious. Down in the right corner, Montag. Opening tray off the heel. Rebound is tapped. Crooks keeps it alive. Crooks puts it up, and she puts it down. 2 nothing. Bishop Garrigan. Montag has been super hot from the three-point line this postseason. Gets the game started with a miss there, but Crooks there to rebound, as always. 
Golden Bears averaging 76.7 points per game. Number one in the state as Joyce peels it away from Jalen Barron. Ball's out of bounds and it will stick with Riceville. It's going to be a big key this whole game. How is Molly Joyce going to deal with the Riceville guards? Have a little bit of height on Molly Joyce, but she's got quickness. Riceville this season, very good offensively and defensively as they get the ball into Joy Barron. Riceville just over 57 and a half points per game as Barron works against Crooks, loses her but misses the shot left, and Capacious grabs the rebound. Tried to get Crooks going one way while she went the other way. It's into the corner to Montag. Another open three, and that one's a little short. Capacious sailing in at the rebound, and she puts it in for nothing. Bishop Garrigan. Well, two misses from the floor, but two offensive rebounds. That's a great start for Capacious and Crooks, cleaning up the offensive glass. Both these teams, very good rebounding teams. Golden Bears grabbing 36 boards per game. Riceville leading the Iowa Star North Conference with 38 and a half points per game. Or make that rebounds per game as Barron drives in and missed it. Had a good look there. She got by Capacious, but Crooks secures the rebound. Yeah, first two possessions, Barron shows some impressive footwork. Getting to the basket there against first against Crooks, that time against the open defense. Uh, watch out for her. She's going to score some points tonight. Barron has some great strength as Joyce side steps into a three and she drills it. 7 nothing Bishop Garrigan as they've scored on their first three possessions. Well, sometimes you can tell what Coach Schwab told this team in the locker room just by watching them. He said, let the three-pointers fly tonight. Pull that defensive apart. They've taken three three-pointers the first three possessions. Riceville's only giving up 27.7 points per game. Second in Class 1A as they get it inside to Tawani Fair and she puts it up and in. Riceville's on the board at 7-2. That's just a good five-out offense. Great cut to the basket uh, by that player and an easy deuce and a nice pass. Live here at Mason City High School on home country, KLGZ Algona's Montag heads into lane, flips up the left-hander, and it bounces off the heel, no good, and Barron grabs the rebound. It's Joy Barron up the court, gets it underneath to Madison Maurer, missing right at the cup, and Joyce grabs the loose ball. Here comes Joyce at the near side of the court. Joyce looking in. Joyce goes around Montag, almost bumped into her there. Lob into Crooks. Crooks in a double team. Spins into the center of the lane, puts up a tough shot, and she draws the foul as Crooks will shoot two with 5.39 on the clock. Yeah, Crooks showing some of her own fancy footwork down there. Barron and Crooks are going to have an impressive show of footwork tonight. These are two very skillful post players, know how to get open, get to the hoop. Audie finds herself at the free throw line. Barron does some tricks that Audie does. She was just looking for that full court lob on the fast break a second ago. This could be a fun matchup. Crooks puts the foul shot up and in. This season, Crooks, 32.3 points per game, 14.4 rebounds. She's averaging career highs in nearly every category in what has been a stellar career as she drains the foul shot. 9-2, Bishop Garrigan out and rolling here to start the ball game. It's Jalen Barron, a sophomore, bringing it across. Barron flips it over to the right to Maurer. Maurer trying to shake loose of Montag. Turns around and gets it to Joy Barron far side. Maurer screens. Barron down the lane. Barron off the window and she rattles it in. There it is. Great footwork, great finish. That is a skillful young player right there. No doubt the reason why Riceville has one loss on the season is in the sub-state final. And a nice screen as the C's really parted there. Across the way to Montag. Corner pocket three. And it's a little bit short. Barron grabs the rebound. Riceville's only loss was to Class 3A number 9 Osage, 40 to 37 earlier this year. Besides that, they've been perfect. Barron drives left, deals to the outside. Tawadi Fair launches a three. It's off the heel. Montag racing for the rebound, and she has it. And she'll stop and let her teammates catch up as she will fling it over to Joyce. Great hustle by Montag. Let's see what Joyce, the point guard, does against this pressure. They're bringing Crooks out front. 9 to 4, Bishop Garrigan on top of Riceville. 440 on the clock as Hovey right wing down into the corner to Montag. Capacious underneath, puts it off the window and she spun it in. We're going to give Coach Schwab credit for that. Points. He brought Crooks all the way out to the top of the key. We hardly ever see that. And that opened up the door for Capacious to get down low, get an easy bucket against a mismatch. 11 to 4, Bishop Garrigan. Barron feeling it for three. That one bounces off. Offensive rebound fair. Tries to reverse and miss the layup as Crooks grabs the rebound. Last season, it was the regional final at Clear Lake High School between these two teams as Bishop Garrigan won 74-33. Oh, Joyce, a wicked spin move. Scoops it up and in, but she traveled. Oh, we've heard about that before, Tyler. That is a patented move by Molly Joyce. Coach Schwab says, you watch it on film, it is not a travel, but officials that haven't seen it before like to call that every time. A little help from the student section over there always helps. And Coach Schwab on the far side of the court for the referee, exchanging a few recipes here to check out after the ball game. 4.08 on the clock. Riceville has the basketball. Joyce applying pressure on Jalen Barron in the backcourt. Barron breaks across. Now Capacious picks her up. She's heading towards the sideline. Ball's out of bounds. Great defense by Capacious and a Riceville turnover. Yeah, nice job, Abby. I suppose they could have not called that. Maybe that's a makeup call. 
you know, that spin move on Joyce and maybe the charges that people try to draw on Crooks, that's something as a coach you talk about the officials before the game. You're kind of warm now. You're going to see a spin move tonight. Into Crooks, edge of the paint. Oh, a nice handoff to Capacious, but she missed off the back of the cup. Rebound Crooks. Crooks follows, and she spun it in. 13-4, Bishop Garrigan. Yeah, she spun that in. Crooks puts a little English on that basketball. It barely was off the board above the rim, but finds its way into the net. Emmy Bartolo, Sasha Olish in for Bishop Garrigan right now, replacing Hobie and Montag. Barron's on the left wing, crossing over against Capacious, charging in. Capacious forced her to a wide angle. Shot misses, it's tapped out of bounds. Wilbering shovels it off of Bartolo, and Riceville will save the possession. Heads up play by Wilbering. She lost body control and was flying out of bounds, but had the wherewithal to snag the basketball, chuck it off of the freshman Bartolo, and save possession for the Riceville. One thing that Coach Darcy Fair for Riceville said before the game, they have to find a way to hit some outside shots tonight, although they're taking it in here. Barron floats and she scores. Nothing but net for Jalen Barron. Yeah, Jalen Barron can be on a one-on-one -on -one contest any day. Uh, she has got some moves to the hoop. Wilberding is trying to stay in front of Crooks. They have a triple team on Crooks. Joyce in the corner to a wide open Bartolo. Rainbow free and there's a swish. It's not a bird. It's not a plane. It's not a balloon in the sky. It's a three pointer dropping out of the rafters. How about that Bartolo freshman into the game. Substate crucial moment hits a big three. First attempt of the game, too, is Barron working against Joyce. Blew a tire, but got it to Wilberding in the corner. Higher can three the other way a little bit short. Ball knocked away from Crooks, and it's into the hand of Joyce. And then the peel away by Maurer. Ball's out of bounds. Last touched by Maurer. Yeah, that's great defense by Joyce. Barron is five inches taller than Joyce, give or take him an inch. And, and Joyce is guarding the bigger player, but she's got the quickness. She's moving her feet side to side. She's cutting off the dribble and forcing the turnover there. A timeout called of 2.45 on the clock. A 30-second timeout, as we'll keep it right here at Mason City High School. Bishop Garrigan, 16, Riceville, 6. And this is somewhat reminiscent of last year. Golden Bears roared out to a 14-1 lead at Clear Lake High School before Riceville settled in. And you feel right now, Riceville is really trying to settle into this ball game and feel out what are good shots on offense. Yeah, Riceville clearly wants to get Barron that ball in the lane. And as we've seen in the past, teams try to draw fouls on Crooks with a player like Barron because she's a good ball handler and she's got moves to the bucket. Coach Swab's kind of negating that by having Crooks relatively stay away from her and guard the backside and letting Joyce and company uh, guard that. Interest, uh, interesting defense approach. We've seen a lot of different defenses out of the Bears this year. I like what they're doing so far. Uh, and offensively, they're letting it fly. Here they've got the ball with Joyce coming at the, uh, the, the defense. Let's see if they keep letting the three-pointers fly. As we resume, we are way up in the sky here at Mason City High School. And yes, folks, you know there's a basketball hoop in front of us, but nothing we can do here. This is just where the press box is, and they can't move the hoop. As Joyce launches a three, and she drills a three right out of the timeout. 19-6, Bishop Garrigan. And I guess the answer is yes, indeed. The Garrett Bears are going to just keep shooting that three ball. Left of the lane, Barron takes a wide angle, and this time she put it in right over Capacious to make it 19-8. Well, the Bears are going to be okay with a bucket here and there as long as they keep shooting this well. I'm impressed with the way Riceville's attacked so far tonight. You might have thought they would just sit outside and shoot outside jumpers, but they've been taking it to the cup as Joyce lost a handle on it right under the bucket, tries to get it back outside to Olish. Right wing three on the way. It's a little bit too strong and rebounded in the lane as Tawani Fair has it. Yes, I know they want to get some outside shots tonight, but you have to dance with who brought you, and they got here by that inside basketball where they're looking up to set it up again. 142 on the clock, quarter number one. Riceville beat West Hancock 43-30. Make that 43, 53-42. There we go in the last round as Wilberding's baseline jumper is off the heel and Capacious grabs the rebound. That was a close game going into the fourth, but Riceville had a crazy fourth quarter finish as it's into Crooks right at the bucket and she puts it up and in. You know, this is what makes Garrigan so tough. Capacious gets the rebound and says, I got it, Molly. Molly goes up to the corner. Capacious takes over as point guard. Audie sets up inside, and they don't give the defense even a second to get back and in position before they score. Barron right wing spins right against Capacious, now back to the bucket. Looking for someone to cut, finding Maurer. Maurer works the baseline. Maurer had it poked away. Out of bounds, this will stay with Riceville with 101 on the clock. That's a good play by Sasha Alish, doing some help defense there, knocking it out of bounds. Alish, another freshman in the game, along with Bartolo. A lot of future for those girls. You know, Alish is, is a pretty high-strung kid. I see was at the YMCA yesterday. What are you doing at the YMCA, Sasha? She's like, I want to shoot in a different hoop, so I'm ready for Mason City. That's well, a player. That is some preparation from the freshman as Taylor Heeman's into the ball game for Riceville. Heeman in the corner, rotates it to Wilburning, and then a bump and a foul by Bishop Garrigan. One on the Golden Bears. Joyce picking that one up. 
Yep. Uh, uh, Crooks give her a smile. Molly smiles back. You know, those two seniors have played a lot of basketball together. They certainly don't want this to be their last game together. And they also don't want to spend any time on the bench by picking up fouls. 50 seconds left in the quarter. Nice crowd tonight. Garrigan wearing the whiteout colors. Riceville has a party at the beach going on in their student section as it's a left angle free by Wilburning. And it's a little bit too strong. It's off of Crooks' hands. It's out of bounds. And Bishop Garrigan can't capitalize as Crooks grits her teeth. She knows she should have had that rebound. Well, I guess it would have just been one more rebound to the thousands that she's gotten here at Bishop Garrigan in her four-year career. Bears are setting up the 2-3 on this out of bounds play. This is usually a good chance to score for the offense if they got a good executed play. Audie Crooks is one of the only players in the five-on-five -five era of 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds as Kylie Dvorak just checking in, misses a three-pointer. Boy, Dvorak was the hero against West Hancock. She hit four three-pointers in the fourth quarter to win that ball game. She came into the game with 13 total made threes on the year, so look for her to try a few more three-pointers tonight. Yeah, you know, crazy things happen in the postseason. Different players you don't expect get hot, start hitting buckets. The Bears are going to work some clock here. Knocked away from Joyce. Good defense by Dvorak as with 9.1 seconds left, Garrigan will inbound from the sideline. You know, Audie Crooks may be the only player we've ever watched, Tyler, that you say she's got over 1,000 re rebounds, and you say, boy, it seems like more. I mean, it just seems like if it's at, up there on the board, she's going to come down with it. She's one of the only five players to score 2,000 points and get 1,000 rebounds in the five-on-five five era. Joyce with some fancy handles. Capacious cross-court feed to Bartolo. Extra pass, Olish. Fade away free from the corner, but she must have shuffled the shoes, and she sure did. Pitter-patter the feet, and that's a turnover with .5 on the clock. Yeah, Bears have done a great job keeping down turnovers. Of course, with the excellent ball handling by Joyce, rarely does she get the balls taken away from her. Rice Wolf, .5, they get it into Barron. Three quarters heave, and that is well short as quarter number one comes to an end, but Bishop Garrigan gets out to a quick start here at Mason City High School. Golden Bears 21 and Wildcats 8 on home country, KLGZ. Having the advantage makes all the difference. At PMC Advantage Insurance Services, we give you the advantage. We offer insurance coverage for your auto, home, farm, crop hail, commercial, life, individual or group health, and bonds and annuities. We are here to make sure you and your belongings are properly covered. We have over 50 companies offering insurance in all 50 states. Our offices are conveniently located in Algona, Burt, Corwith, Garner, Sway City, and West Bend. You can also find us at our website, pmca.agency, or call 515-295-9433. Stop by one of our offices today and see what we can do for you. PMC Advantage Insurance Services, a pharmacist mutual insurance company. At Iowa State Bank, many of their employees use the skills they learned as student athletes to help their customers succeed. That's why they provide recognition for special accomplishments like playing in the state tournament as the proud sponsor of state tournament t-shirts. Last year, they proudly sponsored t-shirts for the Algona Bulldogs and the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears as they made several state tournament appearances. Good luck to our student athletes as they compete on the field and in the classroom from Iowa State Bank helping students succeed member FDIC second quarter here from Mason City High School as Riceville has the basketball coming out of the quarter break Bishop Garrigan right now leading 21 to 8 as one of these teams is going on to Wells Fargo Bishop Garrigan trying to do that for the fourth season in a row. Riceville trying to do it for the first time in the five-on-five five era as Montag intercepts a pass and forces a turnover. They tried to throw a bullet pass right inside, and Montag stepped in the passing lane. Barron's handling the ball deep outside, and Joyce is not letting her get close. Corner pocket, Hovey letting it fly, and she rattles it in. Boy, did Hovey need that one, and it's 24-8. Oh, I'm so happy to see number 30 drain that three-point shot. She is so good all season, but relatively cold as of late. Hovey had been one of her last 16 on three-pointers over the past eight games. There's a jumper just inside the foul line by Wilberding. It's pinballed right back into Wilberding's hand. Gets it out to Barron. Corner to Wilberding. Wide open three, and she shot it too long. Rebound is knocked away. Crooks couldn't handle it, and Wilberding tracks it down. And then she traveled as she was trying to navigate the corner of that court. Yeah, she kind of got bumped by her own player and lost a bit of footing there in the corner. But that's two offensive rebounds. That does not happen very often against the Bishop Garrigan Bears. You know, it's 24 to 8, but a sub state tournament game is the only time where you can be up at 24 to 8 and think no lead is safe uh, when things get crazy when these teams are facing the end of a season. 
No doubt about it, especially if the way Riceville can heat up. Escapacious cuts baseline, goes under a defender, missed right at the cut point blank range, rips the rebound away, falls back a bit, too strong, and it's pulled down by Joy Barron. Boy, you're not wrong, Tyler. She ripped that away from the opponent, Capacious, with the guns. Barron spins to the right, slices between two defenders, puts it off the window and scores. What a move by Barron. Wow, impressive keeping her footwork there in traffic. Nice job by the Riceville player. Joy Barron's averaging 13 points per game, number three in the Iowa Star North Conference, as Joyce is on the left wing, all the way across to Hobie. Inside Crooks, tight window. Crooks got it. Crooks put it in for two. Boy, what a pass by Hobie. There's a person in front of Crooks, a person behind, and she put it right where only Crooks could get it. Now a drive the other way. Shot is off target by Heeman. Pulled down by Montag for Bishop Garrigan, and now here comes Joyce. Eyes the defender. Bursts into the front court. Offensive foul. Yeah, Joyce getting harassed as she goes up the floor, and she extends that arm. That's what officials are looking for. He gets the charge call. You, if you extend that arm, officials will let you know right away that they saw that. So that's going to be the second foul on Molly Joyce here in the second quarter. Boy, two fouls early on Joyce. We'll see if Riceville goes after her and tries to pick up a third one here. As we'll have it with Barron. They'll screen. Barron, open look for three. Missed it a little bit left, and Joyce grabs the rebound. They're trying to swat it away. Joyce tight ropes, and this time a blocking foul as it'll go against Dvorak. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing against Molly Joyce, you do exactly what Riceville is doing. You put a body on her as tight as you can and, and make sure you put intense pressure on Molly Joyce as much as you can. And uh, if you're not going to steal the ball, you're at least going to make Molly Joyce's night very long. Now regarding Joyce, you can see that brace on her left leg as Joyce gets it beyond the perimeter. Now it's capacious into Crooks. It's a little bit tall. Crooks leaps up and grabs it, and she puts it in for two more. That is an early 12 points by Audie Crooks and a 28 to 10 Bishop Garrigan lead. As drive the other way by Barron and a foul on the floor, not in the act of shooting. Barron just put her head down and said, I'm driving to the left side of the hoop and no one's going to stop me. Abby Capacious was not going to back down and was just going step for step with her on the hoop and they call Abby for the blocking foul. Barron from the baseline, lobs it in, leaping grab by Fair. Capacious trying to front her, knocked it away to Barron, works the baseline, deals outside. Dvorak wide open, and it's off the glass, no good. Knocked away in the lane, picked up by Montag, and Montag avoids Fair and flips it over to Joyce. Yeah, things have gotten a little bit rougher here in the last couple minutes. Physicality has increased. Hovey, far side triple, that's an air ball. Montag trying to tap it back in, and she got up to Crooks. Offensive board for Bishop Garrigan off the hustle by Montag. Capacious corner to Montag. Line driving three, and that is way short. And Rebounded by Heeman. Yeah, both those last two shots far off for the Bears. Might need a breather. Heeman cross court feed to Mauer. Mauer's three is an air ball. That's tipped out of bounds as Heeman oh. can't collect it. And these teams are both raining down air balls on each other right now. <laughs> Everyone is confused about that call. I, I, I don't think there was a Golden Bear close to that ball, but it's going back to Riceville. Yeah, I. I'll be honest, I really thought that one was off of Riceville, but Riceville will keep it here. Heeman across the lane to the top of the key to Mauer. Rotation over to Dvorak, tries again. This three misses left, and Capacious boxes out fair for the rebound. That was an excellent box out by Capacious. The Capacious family calling for an over the back. Not going to get it. Joyce, deep three on the way, and she airballs it. What is going on inside of this gymnasium? There's a draft in here or something. Yeah, there is. There must be a windstorm down there because the Bears aren't even close to the hoop, and the freshmen are coming back in. Alish and Bartolo, if anything, they're going to give a breather because the pace has been pretty serious down there and I think we need some people to get some lungs underneath them. I think we're a little bit tired at the moment speaking for the Golden Bears but the Riceville players they're looking a little bit tired to me as well. Four minutes, 30 seconds until coffee and donuts or tea and crumpets for some people at halftime, <laughs> although I think the people eating those at halftime are not playing in the regional final. So Riceville has the basketball right now. It's 28 to 10. Bishop Garrigan in the lead. Mauer drifts left, deals into the corner to Jalen Barron. Joyce gives her a little space as Barron casually dribbles towards the right, attacks into the lane, puts it off the glass, left it short, and Crooks peels the rebound away. Now that is great defense by Molly Joyce. You won't notice that in the stat book, but she just avoided her third foul, kept her body vertical, and also confused the shot. Bartolo high feed to Crooks. Fingertip catch. She put it in, and the foul. Crooks got hit in the face, and she'll try to finish a three-point play, but what a feed by Bartolo to fit that into a crazy window. Yeah, boy, you know, I would never throw that pass. I think there's no way that player's open. She's triple teamed. Audie Crooks is triple teamed there, and there's some height in there as well. But Bartolo throws that right on the money. 
Crooks takes a shot in the face and still puts the bucket in. Bad passes for any other team are good passes for Garrigan. Throw it into a double team. There's Ani Crooks as she'll put it in for a three-point play. And a timeout called with 4.01 on the clock. We'll take a timeout right now as well on Home Country KLGZ. Sports Boosters bringing you this broadcast. Dump it. They do the dirty work so you don't have to. Greg Penning and Company, certified public accountants, where everyone counts. Neil Albert Electric. Flip the switch to Albert Electric. Chemco Tires. They're all you need to know about tires and service. Tom Ice and Sales. Your store in the country. Highway 18 west of Algona. Algona Plumbing and Heating. Where a good flush always beats a full house. Grassmasters. Growing satisfied customers. Trend Salon. Your complete family hair salon. It's all about you. All bringing you this broadcast on the radio. At Chemna Auto Center, they understand that you have no shortage of options when it comes to purchasing or servicing your car. They're your hometown dealer for new GM, Ford, and Chrysler makes and models. Plus, they also offer an extensive selection of pre-owned vehicles. Serving you with a dedicated sales and finance team, along with world-class service technicians that are passionate about keeping your ride in top shape. Visit their showrooms today for an experience you deserve. Chemna Auto Center in Algona. Bishop Garrigan 31, Riceville 10 as the Wildcats will have the basketball. Golden Bears starting the second quarter on a 10-2 score and Ranazani Crooks has 15 points and is perfect at the foul line right now. Down to the baseline, Jalen Barron eyes the jumper, passes it up in the corner, free ball fair, line drive to short, and Capacious has the rebound. Up to Joyce, Joyce racing to the bucket, scoop layup, missed it, and the rebound is taken by Maurer. She was just flying there and flew right past the hoop, too hard off the glass. Too much momentum coming in as Jalen Barron Flashes across the lane, deals to Fair, Fair off the runner, and she drops it in. Nice pass by Jalen Barron on the cutter here. Coach Schwab telling Molly Joyce, let's slow it down. Let's work this around for a good shot. That's a good shot by Tawadi Fair, the sophomore, who's been averaging nine points per game on 49% shooting. Into Crooks, over the double team, blocking foul on Riceville. Crooks put it in, and a chance for another three-point play. By that time, that was a nice pass by Sasha Alesh, putting it in the, in the paint of Crooks. They tried to draw that charge. You know, teams have done that in the past. Freshman year, Audie picked up quite a few charges. It would be interesting to see her stat line over the years of how many charges she commits. She doesn't do that anymore as a senior. She knows how not to lower that shoulder, throw that arm into the player, and they get the blocking foul now instead of Audie picking up the charge. And another swish at the foul line by Audie Crooks, who is having a career best year at the charity stripe, just under 62%. But boy, Riceville, you said last year that they didn't know what it was like to defend Joyce and Crooks as Barron gets by on the blow by and lays it in. And they've had one year of experience doing that, but it is still hard to do, even if you've seen them once before. Yes, I agree. Well, now up 34 to 14, you got this big lead. Garrigan content to trade baskets in the last couple possessions. Olish to the top of the key to Capacious. Trying to throw it over to Bartolo and the knock away by Jalen Barron. Capacious chases it all the way down. Bartolo now into Crooks. One on one against Barron and Crooks with the two. Hey, one thing I love about the tenaciousness of these Garrigan girls is when they get the ball stolen, you got to watch out. They don't give up. They'll come steal it right back. Happens many times this season. Audie Crooks has passed the 2,600 career point mark. She did that earlier tonight. Is now a loose ball on the floor as a jump ball. And the possession arrow is towards Garrigan with 229 on the clock. 36-14, now the score. Capacious inbounding to Joyce. See if the Bears slow it down and run a set play. And Coach Schwab says, yeah, let's run it through. Joyce bringing it across half court as Olish pops over to get the basketball. Top of the key, Capacious. Capacious left wing to Joyce. Capacious screens. Joyce across the foul line. Lost the dribble and it's taken by Fair. Here comes Riceville on the push. Fair stops. Spins away from Olish into the lane. Now open in the corner is Maurer. Let's it fly for three. And she finds the bottom of the net. Well played, Maurer. Oh, you got to love that if you're Riceville. You get a steal from Joyce and then go back, convert it into three points. They need a lot more of that. 36-17, Bartolo on the penetration. Got to the cup and missed the open layup. Great drive by Bartolo. Everything except the cherry on top. Now Riceville the other way, Barron across the foul line, left wing fair, rotates to Maurer, same spot, same result. There's a swish by Maurer, and now Riceville getting a little momentum. Yeah, Maurer heating up, 36 to 20 is the score. Two three-pointers in a row. That cuts into leads very quickly, that three-point shot. 
Bears are going to run. They're going to extend it all the way out. Feeling it from the corner. Mauer's been averaging 8.3 points per game. Joyce, a corner three of her own. Almost banks that one in, but it's no good. Barron chases down the rebound, and she got bumped and fouled with 119 on the clock. That is number five against Bishop Garrigan. And that one is going to go against Capacious. Boy, and the Riceville crowd is feeling it now. Their beach-clad student section are roaring after that foul by Capacious. See if they can come down and put another three-point shot in, cut into this 16-point lead a little more and make this game exciting. Here's Joy Barron, the conference assist leader for Riceville, comes down into the corner. Now it's Matt, make that Jalen Barron of the ball. Barron guarded by Bartolo, feeds it to Joy Barron. Barron goes under Crooks. Crooks with a rejection as she stayed with it into Wilberding's hands. Corner to Barron. Barron trying to avoid Bartolo. May have gotten hit in the face there. Ball knocked away. Barron picks it back up, skids it across, finding the cutting Jalen Barron. Left the ball behind, and it's poked over to Allish. Well, for two possessions there, the Bear defense was willing to trade baskets, but not anymore. That was a great defensive possession. Joyce on the left wing, flings it right to Allish. Catch and rip three, off the heel, and rebounded by Joy Barron. Barron trying to stay out of traffic, and she'll bring it across half court. 35 seconds on the clock, 29 on the game clock. Barron into the corner to Barron. It's Jalen Barron getting the screen from Joy Barron. Back to Joy Barron. Long two jumper on the way. A little bit short and Crooks rebounds. Tries to outlet to Joyce, but Crooks was fouled as she tried to turn and pass. Well, that is a foul clear in the backcourt. Crooks was going to throw the baseball lob full court to Joyce. She can hit her receivers right in stride, and that was going to be an easy two. So smart foul if you're a Riceville fan. That was going to be to make the Bears earn it the hard way because they've gone cold recently. They started the game super hot, and now this second quarter, they've cooled down quite a bit. 36 to 20, Bishop Garrigan on top as Riceville had back-to-back -back threes by Maurer to grab a little momentum. Now the shot clock is off as Joyce burns the time away near half court. Joyce starting left with eight seconds. Joyce looking to attack of seven. Joyce drives, she stops. Capacious at the foul line of four. Out to Allish of three. Let's it fly for a triple, and it's off the back of the cup. Rebound is loose, and that is the end of the second quarter. Bishop Garrigan is halfway to state for the fourth year in a row as they lead Riceville 36 to 20 and have 16 more minutes of work to do. We'll take a time out and come back with your halftime coverage next on Home Country Radio and at the Algona Radio YouTube live stream. Tournament sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio brought to you by Algona Livestock Auction, sales every Monday. American Glass, for all your glass needs, think American. Countryside Barbecue Sauce, with two sauces for all seasons. Daylight Donuts, open early, serving freshly made donuts, rolls, and coffee. Farm and Home Services, check their many listings at farmhomeservices.com. Style Salon, your salon in Algona. Create yourself. Tape Wellness Center in Algona and Armstrong, keeping athletes in the game. Holmes Animal Clinic, caring for your pets. Big and small, they love them all. All sponsoring this broadcast on Hometown and Home Country Radio. At Security State Bank, we realize each customer has a unique set of needs and goals. That's why we place a greater value on providing outstanding customer service. All products and services are designed for customers within our local community. We value each customer that walks through our door and wants to give them the personalized attention they deserve. Find out why Security State Bank in Algona, Burt, and Laverne is your partner in community banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Security State Bank. The Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union encourages positive behavior. Pride, respect, leadership, and sportsmanship on the court and in the stands. Remember what a great privilege it is to see your team compete. Thank you for your attendance. Enjoy the game. And enjoy the game. More Sports Boosters bringing you this game on the radio. Purple Ding Void and Company, CPAs, they're not just about taxes. Iowa Lakes Community College, your community, your college. Purple Ding Excavating, for all your drainage and excavating needs. AK's Chrome Kitchen, when you come in, your family. Stroman Family Dental, giving you something to smile about. Jake Ingalls Electric, shockingly good service. Phil's Auto and Truck Repair, getting you back on the road. Algona Frame and Auto Body, a total commitment to excellence. All bringing you this game on the radio. At Wiffles Hybrids, they're completely focused on developing and producing the very best seed corn on the planet. The snack they've been polishing for more than 70 years, right here in the heart of the Corn Belt. Wiffles Hybrid, one thing done right. For more information, contact Rich Rosenmeyer, Dale Lappy, or Mitchell Carroll at JDR Seed of Wesley, 515-341-2452, or visit wiffles.com. 
big bank can deliver the products you need and the convenience you expect. A small bank can make you feel like family. At Fidelity Bank & Trust, we don't think you should have to choose. Your hometown bankers have roots here. We understand the community and why you want to live here. Because we live here too. We're big enough to deliver, yet small enough to care. Fidelity Bank & Trust, your hometown bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Your hometown Fidelity Bank & Trust, located in Bancroft, Iowa. Time from Mason City High School as right now it is the Bishop Garrick and Golden Bears 36 and the Riceville Wildcats 20 here in this regional final ball game. I'm Tyler Lance alongside my partner Beanie Bodie. Just a reminder, if you're looking for Algona against Humboldt, we have another stream going up for that right now. That's also on our sister station, KLGA 92.7 as the Algona Bulldogs lead the Humboldt Wildcats 33-30 at halftime. But here inside of this gymnasium, Beanie Bodie, we've got a 36-20 Bishop Garrigan lead. Audie Crooks with 20 of those 36 points. Boy, she has been Great at the foul line tonight. Great touch around the basket. And once again, Riceville, you can throw anything you want at Crooks, but it is very, very hard to defend that senior. Such a luxury to have Crooks on the inside. Garrigan starts the game shooting gangbusters from the three-point line. Hit three three-pointers. And uh, when they weren't hitting the three-pointers, Coach Slob just says, let's run our offensive set that gets the ball into Audie. And even when she was double-teamed and then triple-teamed, they still ran that same play, get that lob to Audie. She's so skillful with her feet and, and gets that ball in the hoop and picks up some serious and one situations. And big thing tonight, Tyler, she's knocking down those free throws. Every team would love to just foul Audie and make her earn those points at the free throw line. But tonight, she is not just making those free throws, she is swishing them. Uh, but... Riceville got hot there at the end of the second quarter. Maurer hit those two three-pointers from the corner, and they had a quick put a person on her and start face guarding her so she couldn't get any more shots off. And, and Tyler, I think, you know, we've missed two days of school because of weather, and that means no practicing or, or uh, at least the girls would have to shoot on their own at the YMCA or something like that. You know, for the game like this, maybe these teams are not as prepared for each other. We've seen a lot of the Bishop Garrigan Bears, of course, in conference. They know their opponents so well. They've been playing against those girls since they were youngsters in elementary school. But even when we went down to Dyke New Hartford and played that number one team in two-way, you could tell that the Bears were very well studied on the film of these teams. And even though they've, I'm sure they've watched the Riceville film, there's a little bit of a helter-skelter feel to this first half of basketball. You're absolutely right about that because today is Thursday. So Bishop Garrigan played Friday. They had the weekend to, you know, do whatever they needed to do. Then no school Wednesday, no school Thursday, like you said. Was there school on Tuesday? You're a teacher there. I, there was indeed school, Tyler. Right, there was school on Tuesday. So you guys do have some school. But like you said, it's limited practice time, you know, somewhat compared to what you would have had minus the snow. Like you said, Sasha Olish got to the gym. She was shooting. I'm sure other Golden Bears did so as well. But, you know, for it's sure. the same for Riceville. We just got a ton of snow. The players, they were all geared up for last night, too. You know, you get up emotionally for a game. You're ready to go on Wednesday. And then they say, nope, 24 more hours. So right. you have to sleep on that, sit on that anxiety for a whole nother day and manage those emotions too. And there was a possibility that this wouldn't happen tonight because Highway 18 was not good coming over here. And it was possible that they would have moved this game back another night. But boy, that would have been a, a calendar nightmare because tomorrow night is the Pops concert at Garrigan. And Saturday night, there's a YMCA fundraiser. Uh, you know, like there's never a good night for rescheduling. So no one likes it. I'm so glad we're getting this game in. Uh, I just hope we pull out the win here. Uh, on this game as a Golden Bear supporter. And uh, that's why I'm a little concerned about this helter-skelter feel of that second quarter. Those type of, those type of games can sometimes uh, result in the, the uh, underdog winning. And certainly Riceville coming in, playing against the number one team in the state is a, a big underdog, and they're down 16 at half. But you, they, you saw them light it up from the three-point line there a moment ago, and they've got a good, good presence inside, and they showed the ability to get some offensive rebounds. But what they don't have is uh, the experience of the Bishop Golden Bears. Uh, four years making a trip to the state tournament. That means this is the fourth sub-state game they played in a row. So it's going to take a lot to rattle them, I believe, at this point. So Bishop Garrigan up 36 to 20 over Riceville at the half. We'll see what the start of the second half brings. We have about three minutes left until basketball action returns. We'll take this time out and come back with our second half of basketball action, the final 16 minutes on Home Country Radio and the Algona Radio YouTube live stream. 
High School Tournament Sports on Hometown Home Country Radio. Brought to you by Grand Net Jewelry and Merle Norman Cosmetics. Your local Red Power team in Bancroft, Corwith, West Bend, and Humboldt. Jumbo's Liquor in Wesley. Dave Lubenthal Crop Insurance and Ag Lending of Bancroft. They can't predict the future, but they can protect it. Algona Floor Design, downtown Algona. Your flooring specialist since 1978. Shoemaker Well and Water Care. They know water from the bottom to the tap. Helmer's Insurance Agency. Get your insurance quote today. The market. Be happy. Shop the market. All bringing you this game on Hometown and Home Country Radio. New appliances are arriving weekly at North Iowa Appliance Center. And with inventory coming in, that means they have a good selection of used appliances too. If you're doing a remodel in the spring, pre-order now and they'll hold it until you're ready. Quality products, quality service, and in-store specials at North Iowa Appliance Center, Highway 18 East in Algona, where they sell the best and service the rest. Carrying Maytag, KitchenAid, Whirlpool, and Amana. Sports Boosters bringing you this tournament broadcast on the radio. Al Lobig Marine of Wesley, Hampton Pontoons, and Mercury Outboards. State Line Cooperative, real people, real pride. Seven Suites in Bancroft, life is short, eat the dessert. Goshi Custom Cabinets in Bancroft. Dietering Brothers in Bancroft, farm equipment, sales and service. Steyer Ag Aviation, aerial and ground application agronomy services. Arndorfer Seed and Precision Management in Bancroft. Diamond Insulation and Roofing in Wesley. All bringing you this game on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Have a business idea you want to make real? Is your small business ready to take the next step and expand? Maybe you're a farmer who needs an experienced and committed ag partner. Whatever your situation, Farmer State Bank is here to help. With a strong history of agricultural and commercial lending, they offer operating lines of credit and loans tailored to your needs. Visit fsbiowa.com or stop by their offices in Algona, Whittemore, and West Bend and see how Farmer State Bank can help put you on the path to success. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. It is just about time for the second half here on Home Country Radio and the Algona Radio YouTube stream as Bishop Garrigan leads Riceville 36 to 20. Beanie, I'm going to flip things around here to the Riceville side. How do you get off the mat and get even closer to Bishop Garrigan in this third quarter? Well, you got to start putting some pressure on the Bears. Even though it's very risky and you might give up a few runout layups, you have to somehow force some passes that you can get in the passing lanes and steal and get some easy buckets. You're down 16. You got to make up about 10 points just with your defense. Defensive hustle, getting steals for layups, and then of course, let that Mauer girl keep shooting that three-pointer. If she gets hot, who knows what could happen for this Riceville team. And you've always got Barron with that great footwork on the inside. And uh, keep letting her go against Crooks. Maybe she can pick up a few fouls. That's what I'm doing if I'm Riceville. And uh, you just got to hope. Right now, 36-20, to 20, Bishop Garrigan, as Riceville has the basketball to start the second half. Wearing the black uniforms as they'll head from left to right on the radio dial, and we are underway. Jalen Barron handing off to Joy Barron, the two Barron sisters, two of the best players in the Iowa Star North Conference as Barron heads right. It's Joy Barron out to Maurer, right wing three, and it popped out of the drain, ever up and down. The follow by Fair, though, is up and in. Talani Fair, Johnny on the spot. See, Maurer was able to get that ball released in one motion as she caught that, a quick release. Yeah, she can get some shots off here in this second half. And Tawadi Fair is good on the boards, averaging eight and a half per game, number three in their conference. Inside to Crooks, off her left hand. Good defense by Riceville. Now here comes Fair. Fair up the court, finding Jalen Barron. Barron was looking for the cutting Wilberding, comes across to Joy Barron. Wide open three, and she got it! Riceville is creeping back in. It's 36-25. There we go, just like that. It's an 11-point game. They score the first five points of the half. Last time they had Crooks triple teamed and were unable to get the ball to Crooks. We'll see what the Bears do with this to answer. Joy Barron of nine points. She's Riceville's best three-point shooter at about 32%. Across to Montag in the corner. Passes up the three. Finds the cutting Capacious all by herself, and she lays it up and in. Oh, that's good offensive execution there. Capacious wide open. She always finds a way to get open on those cuts. As in the corner, it's Maurer rotating over to Wilberding. Wilberding to the foul line. Jumper blocked by Crooks. She got a hand up there, and now here comes Joyce. Joyce up the near side. One and a half minutes into quarter number three. Joyce around the screen. Flings it into Crooks. Crooks off the window, and a foul as Audie Crooks will shoot two free throws. Oh, there's the magic of Molly Joyce. You know, she looked like she was going to take it coast to coast. 
Riceville does a good job getting back in the paint so she can't convert to the bucket, but then she just does this little magic crossover, allows Crooks to get position at the block and floats that assist in. Crooks is right back at the free throw line. Crooks with 20 points right now. Last year when these two teams matched up as Crooks rattles in the foul shot, Crooks had 31 points and 12 boards. Molly Joyce had 25, and then nobody on Riceville had more than eight. So Barron has already eclipsed that tonight. 39-25, Bishop Garrick and Crooks again. And there's another swish. Boy, Crooks is locked in at the line tonight. She must have put some work in at the free throw line. She's looking automatic right there. Now Rice off the basketball, Barron on the wing. Flips it left to Wilberding. Wilberding steps back. Her free's a little bit short. Joyce has the rebound out of her hand. It's into Barron's hands. Wraps the pass around to Fair. Fair floats. A little bit too strong. Crooks rebounds, and that one is going to go against Crooks. He'll get Crooks for her first foul of the night. Yeah, good position inside there. Never should have got to that point here. The Bears got to do a better job of team rebounding there on defense. Everyone needs to crash those boards, but I think some people were thinking, hey, we're going to get a run out here, an easy bucket. Now they're setting up in their 2-3. The 5'7 senior Morgan Fair checks in for Wilbering for Riceville. Barron baseline stumbling a little bit and keeping it. Over to Maurer. Got it into traffic as Maurer picks it up and flips it to Barron. Barron cross court feed to Fair. Fair tries to sidestep and she traveled. Yeah, I was going to say, this, this whole Riceville team has some very happy feet. A lot of foot shuffling going on whenever the player catches the ball. It doesn't look real clean, but that is their first travel call tonight, and that one looked very obvious. Molly Joyce across half court. Flips it to Capacious, now back to Joyce, the tip away, but it's back into Capacious' hands as Barron almost forced the turnover. Cross-court feed to Montag, catches, slides, flips it into Crooks, players go crashing down, Crooks trips over a body, ball rolls away, and they whistle it dead, and what's the call here? Yeah, that's a hard call. Like, people are hitting the floor, but no one is really fouling anybody. Crooks did an unbelievable job of catching that basketball. She did the limbo to reach back and snag it and then uh, ends up tripping over a player that was on the floor. Yeah, those are the Riceville fans you hear booing from across the, across the court as the Riceville crowd does not like that foul getting called on them. That's, that's a tough one. I mean, you're laying on the floor. Like, what can you do there? You know, I don't know what the rule book says. We've seen that a couple times this year when someone is on the floor because of some other action and then someone trips over them. Do they need to get called for a foul? Like, they, they weren't intentionally. It wasn't their fault they were on the floor, but someone trips over them. Uh, and they get called for the foul. That's unfortunate for that player. Well, Reagan Murphy on the Bishop Garrigan bench just loaned her jacket to Crooks to wipe up the sweat off that floor on the left side of the court. Joyce underhands it into Capacious and we're rolling. 5.40 on the clock, Bishop Garrigan up by 15. Montag's entry pass knocked away and there's a turnover. Here comes Barron for Riceville. Joy Barron sees Joyce, attacks into the body, puts it off the glass and drops it in. What a great drive by Barron. Riceville has got all the momentum right now, down 13. Barron is such a physical player, a 5'9 senior, incredibly strong. Saw Joyce and said, I'm just taking it in. I have the size and strength advantage. Across to Hovey, rotates to Joyce right wing. Joyce on the drive, down the lane, rising for a jumper, and she rattles at home. A great, uh, Molly Joyce used her brains on that one. They're putting all that pressure up front like I called for Riceville to do, and Molly realizes I gotta penetrate here. Barron spins against Capacious, pumps, puts the left-hander up, and she put it in. What a move by Barron. Fancy footwork there from Riceville. Here comes Joyce, and uh, the Riceville defense is coming way out. Barron has 13 points, and she says, I put the team on my back as Joyce drives in. She put it in, they're counting it. She got the continuation and the foul as Molly Joyce will shoot for a three-point play. Oh, Tyler, we have seen that all season. You just feel like the pressure's starting to come against the Bears and the other team getting momentum, and Molly Joyce, the senior, says, I'm going to snap that momentum right back for the Bears, and she takes it to the hoop. That's four points in a row for Joyce, trying to make it five here at the free throw line. Bishop Garrigan on top of Riceville with 4.46 on the clock. Joyce free throw on the way, and that one rattles into the cup. 11 points by Molly Joyce. Right now 43-29 to 29 on the scoreboard. As Riceville has the basketball up top, Jalen Barron. Maurer tried the back cut. Alice did a nice job defending. Barron drives, scoops up a wild layup and missed it. Maurer tiptoes the baseline and collects it, but her foot was out of bounds. Well, you might be listening at home wondering, well, how has Riceville didn't score so much? They only had eight points in the first quarter, and suddenly they're scoring. Well, the Bears' man-to-man -man is decent, but Barron is a very good player, and she is getting some good one-on-one -on -one matchups and taking it to the hoop. 45-29. Riceville's been playing a lot of zone here in the second half. They're really a man-to-man -man team usually as Crooks puts it up and in. Barron tried to avoid the foul, and it's 47-29, Bishop Garrigan. Yeah, you, if you don't get that triple team on Audi right away, it's going to be easy pickings. Barron powering in. Deals to Maurer on the corner. 
Rainbow free, she hits it again. Madison Maurer is on a heater tonight, and it's 47-32. She loves that left corner. I don't think she's missed from there. Bishop Garrigan up 47-32. Joyce to the foul line, Capacious. Corner to Olish, trying to answer for three, and she does. Nothing but net, Stacia Olish. 50-32, Bishop Garrigan, and a full timeout called. We'll take the timeout as well. Here from Mason City High School, 349 on the clock in the third quarter, and the Golden Bears up 50-32. Sports Boosters bringing you this tournament broadcast on the radio. Al Lobig Marine of Wesley, Hampton Pontoons, and Mercury Outboards. Stateline Cooperative, real people, real pride. Seven Suites in Bancroft, life is short, eat the dessert. Goshi Custom Cabinets in Bancroft. Dietering Brothers in Bancroft, farm equipment, sales and service. Steyer Ag Aviation, aerial and ground application agronomy services. Arndorfer Seed and Precision Management in Bancroft. Steinman Insulation and Roofing in Wesley. All bringing you this game on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Have a business idea you want to make real? Is your small business ready to take the next step and expand? Maybe you're a farmer who needs an experienced and committed ag partner. Whatever your situation, Farmer State Bank is here to help. With a strong history of agricultural and commercial lending, they offer operating lines of credit and loans tailored to your needs. Visit fsbiowa.com or stop by their offices in Algona, Whittemore, and West Bend and see how Farmer State Bank can help put you on the path to success. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Well, Bishop Garrigan only hit one three-pointer against Riceville on Friday night. Or make that St. Ansgar on Friday night, but they're loosening up tonight against Riceville. Sasha Olish hits a three to give the Golden Bears a 50-32 lead. Barron in the post, pivoting, but Capacious stays in front. Back outside Maurer. Maurer to the right wing to Fair, now rotating it to Jalen Barron. Guarded by Joyce. Throws it behind the cutting Dvorak, and it's taken away by Bishop Garrigan. Well, you see that timeout by Coach Schwab. He said, all right, we're going to put pressure on their guards and come up top and not let them get that ball in. Olish to Hovey on the right wing, cross court to Joyce. Joyce on the left wing, surveys the defense, drives in, puts it off the window of the right-handed, missed it. Capacious sails in, and she cleans the glass for two. What a rebound by Capacious. The right-handed shot by the left-handed Joyce. Down to Jalen Barron baseline. Dribbles with the left hand. Cross court, over to Fair, catch and fire three, and it's off the glass, no good. And another rebound by Crooks. Yeah, that was an excellent timeout by Coach Schwab. Kind of slowed that momentum of Riceville, and now Molly Joyce just walks up the court. Just really killed that momentum that Riceville had. Hovey to the cutting Capacious. Capacious hangs and passes to the left wing. Olish three try, and she swished it again. Let's say she always shoot it. It is 55-32. Boy, she missed her first one badly, and now she just swishes the last two threes. Barron sidesteps into a tray, missed it right, and Joyce sailing in for the rebound. She's trying to keep it away from Jalen Barron. Joyce runs the floor, threads it to Capacious. Capacious up a bit. She put it down. She got fouled. Abby Capacious with a chance for a three-point play, and Bishop Garrigan starting to crack the armor a little bit here in the third quarter. Abby Capacious, just a workhorse in all of her sports, softball, track especially, but here on the basketball floor, she's always doing the tough job inside, and she doesn't show a lot of emotion, but boy, Tyler, you saw Capacious, maybe the most emotion we've seen out of her this season. She just erupts after this and one. Capacious is a 76% free throw shooter trying to finish a three-point play, and she does. Nine points for Abby Capacious, 58-32 Golden Bears as they have been roaring here after that timeout by Coach Schwab. Riceville needs a quick answer. Handed off to Joy Barron, back to Capacious, drives left of the lane. Stops her dribble, looks, turns, and comes out to the top of the key to Jalen Barron. Guarded by Joyce, 2.04 on the clock. Barron works towards the right, looking for Maurer. Maurer takes the handoff across the lane. Maurer drifts all the way to the far corner. Bartolo stays on her like glue. Nine on the shot clock. Maurer gives it back to Joy Barron. They'll screen. Here comes Barron to the foul line. Jumper's blocked by Crooks. She got it again. Now here comes Joyce. 1.46 on the clock. Joyce into Crooks. Crooks pumps, hesitates, puts it up and puts it in. 60 to 32, Bishop Garrigan, defense turning into offense for the Golden Bears. Well, Tyler, was it just an 11 point lead about four minutes ago? More, four minutes ago in this game, and now it's 60 to 32. And that's the explosiveness of Bishop Garrigan as the pass is wrapped around to Riley McKenna. McKenna missed, and Crooks grabs the rebound. And now Joyce wants to push. Joyce down the lane, and she threw it away, and that'll be a turnover. Yeah, Molly was flying. She has got some serious speed on the track and on the basketball court. Nothing was going to stop her there. Just lost a handle. 
There's a lot of contact there. I'm glad that was a no call there. I was worried it could have gone either way if they did call a foul. But a good no call by the official. Bishop Garrigan up. 60-32 to 32 as Riceville has the basketball back, trying to steal some momentum before the end of the quarter. And Coach Fair would like a timeout for the Wildcats of 109 on the clock. So timeout called. We'll take a timeout as well here on Home Country Radio and at the Algona Radio YouTube live stream. Sports coverage on Hometown and Home Country Radio brought to you by... Lance and Tracy Ludwig, your channel seat dealer in Wesley. Wearspawn Chiropractic and Massage. J&J &J Custom Meats located in Whittemore. Wine and Spirit Shop locally owned at 111 South Phillip Street. Fairway Meat and Grocery. Everything's easier, fresher, and faster with Elgona Fairway. Mansky Farm Drainage. Providing top quality professional service to the area since 1969. Rothler Electric. Don't be left in the dark. Call 295-7117 today. Murphy Realty and Management. All bringing you this postseason basketball action on the radio. SignWorks Inc. has solutions for your signage needs as well as vehicle graphics in all sizes from a logo on the window to wrapping your entire vehicle whether it's a banner magnetic or building signage signworks inc strives to provide fast friendly service they also are a source for custom screen printing on garments if they can't provide you with what you need they will direct you to who can they are your local resource for signage and screen printing using your ideas and their creativity signworks inc 1613 east locust street algona 295-9544 or email info at signworksinc.com. Riceville with the basketball as we come back. Barron kept it out of trouble, almost turned it over. She gets it over to Dvorak. We're down under one minute left in the third quarter as Bishop Garrigan's up 60 to 32. Barron working against Crooks, has her marooned along the baseline. Comes back out, Dvorak, right angle three, and she drills it. Whoa, nice shot by Dvorak. Now they need about 25 more punches like that. Dvorak had four three-pointers in the fourth quarter in that win over West Hancock in the last round, and Coach, Fair told me before the game, Dvorak was actually six, so you could say she had her Jordan flu game as it's inside to Crooks. Crooks stumbles on an offensive foul. Crooks backed her way into the defense, and that was Barron drawing it. Yeah, good position by Barron. She was as close to Audie Crooks as you can get. I think Audie's trying to say, don't I get a chance to come down with the ball? Uh, but, boy, she was glued to Audie Crooks. That, was, that belonged in last week's wrestling tournament, that kind of body closeness. And uh, that pass was high and deep, and Crooks had to lean back and get it. Sent her opponent flying to the floor. And the charge call will send Audie Crooks to the bench. Regan Murphy will replace her with 29 seconds left in the quarter. That is foul number two against Crooks. Barron sees Joyce, takes one dribble, and gets it left to McKenna. McKenna back to the bucket, back out to Barron. Barron of 19 seconds. Barron looking at the bucket, gets turned away by Joyce. Now down to 15 seconds. Bounces it back out to Dvorak. Dvorak heads right. Montag stays in front. Now it's Jalen Barron with nine seconds in the corner to Dvorak. Golden Bears playing good defense here up to Joy Barron with five seconds top of the key. Barron left of the lane. Attacks into Joyce. Joyce got a hand on it. Tremendous defense, and the third quarter is over. Molly Joyce comes up with a block shot, and Bishop Garrigan has a 60 to 35 lead as they are eight minutes away from state. We'll come back next with the final eight minutes of basketball on Home Country KLGZ. Sports Boosters bringing you this game on the radio. Prism Wealth Advisors, your roadmap to financial freedom, serving Algona and the surrounding communities. Algona Feed Store with all your feed needs. Peps, where friends don't let friends go thirsty. River Road, your friends are here. Steyer Flooring, home of the Florinator. Algona Municipal Utilities, community owned for community benefit. Hein Endeavors, proud supporters of postseason basketball. Miller Construction, complete construction. Contact Scott or Lynn today. I'll bring you this postseason basketball action on Hometown and Home Country Radio. It's true, many of us spend more time thinking about what's for dinner than preparing for retirement. But if you think your retirement needs deserve more attention, I agree, and I'd like to help. I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor Bruce Keith. Together we can give you your long-term retirement strategy the attention it deserves. Stop by our office at 100 North Phillips Street. Contact me, Bruce Keith, at 515-295-5173. Together with Jerry Sadler, Mackenzie Keith, and Brady Ross, we're your local Edward Jones Financial Advisors. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, members SIPC. Fourth quarter about to get underway from Mason City High School as Bishop Garrigan leads Riceville 60-35. to 
Golden Bears trying to defeat Riceville in the regional final for the second year in a row as Capacious cuts. Montag finds her and Capacious puts it in for two. That's such a nice little curl play. They bring Capacious across the free throw line. Oh, here's a run out by, by Riceville. Misses the open shot, though. Fair could not knock down the jumper as Riceville touched the balls and headed out of bounds. You know, look at that end of the third quarter that we're already... 20 seconds into the fourth, but Tyler, I got to talk about that defensive play by Molly Joyce at the end of the third quarter. That was just a nail in the coffin right there at the end of the third where Joyce comes up with the block right at the end on Barron. Golden Bears played about 30 seconds of great defense on that possession as it's into Crooks and a sandwich. It doesn't matter as she puts it in for two. She just does a little pirouette there, avoiding any fouls. Beautiful play by Crooks. 26 points for Ronnie Crooks. A bounce pass to McKenna. Short corner jumper, and there's an air ball into the pocket of Zoe Montag. Now it's Joyce. Joyce heads left. Joyce sees an opening, heads down the lane. She spun it in. She got the foul, and Joyce will have a chance for a three-point play. Oh, that crossover dribble is deadly. She's a natural lefty, and she hits that ball in her right hand. She sets up her defender, crosses over to her left, and she just has such a quick step and just can blow by anybody in the state. 14 points now for Molly Joyce as she knocks in the three throw, and Bishop Garrigan's up 67-35 to over Riceville. Riceville shooting better than they did last season when they faced Bishop Garrigan as they were just 2 of 17 on threes last year as there's a nice move by Barron pivoting inside and drawing the foul. And the three-pointers kept Riceville afloat for a long time here, but Bishop Garrigan, they've really paced it out in the second half. They've pushed the pace. They've hit threes of their own, and they have pulled away here up 67-35. Yeah, Garrigan went on that 9-0 run about three minutes left to go in the third quarter where Abby Capacious got an and one. Seisha Alish hit two threes in a row. And nine points just came in a matter of seconds. And, and uh, boy, that just really sent the momentum squarely in Garrigan's direction. Well, Barron misses the first three throw, and she'll try for one more. You'll notice that both Barons have different colored shoes, one on the right foot, one on the left foot, both of different colors. They're actually sisters who wear the same shoe size. So they buy different colors, and they split them up between them. So each has a different colored shoe on each leg. And uh, they also share the rock as well. They finished first and second in the conference and assists this year as it's left wing to Montag, now down into the corner to Joyce with 6.43 on the clock. Beanie, I'm guessing back in your day you didn't have quite the same shoe game the Barons had or that Crooks has. I didn't have shoes, Tyler. Hey, but you have a sister. Why don't you and your sister do that? Into Crooks and she'll score for two. Vastly different foot sizes and also a, a lack of willingness to share things between us. <laughs> well, she didn't get the elite running shoes that you buy. That is very true. As it's down to the corner, a three ball Wilberding. It's off the side of the square, no good. And it's rebounded by Joyce. Joyce up head to Capacious. She bobbles it, she's under the bucket, trying to get it back into Joyce. Left wing tray on the way, and Joyce left it short, and Barron rebounds near side of the court. Trust me, folks, you don't want to spend as much money on shoes as I do. As Joyce peels the ball away from Barron, Hovey runs the bucket and puts it in off the Joyce find. Tyler, we're so busy talking about footwear, we're missing this incredible fourth quarter that Molly Joyce is putting together. She just came up with a great steal off the inbounds pass. Bishop Garrigan back on defense as Joyce is guarding Jalen Barron. I'll tell you what, if there is such a thing as a defensive player of the year in the conference as Jalen Barron drives in, but a stuff by Crooks. There'd be several Golden Bears in contention, including Capacious and Joyce, as the foul line runner misses, and Crooks has the rebound. Yeah, and that defense, that timeout that Coach Schwab called halfway through the third quarter, I don't know what he told them, but it had to be something the lines of, we can play 100 times better at defense, and they came out of that timeout and just absolutely shut down the Riceville offense. So that timeout was a major turning point in this game where uh, the Garrigan defense just really stepped it up coming out of that timeout. And... Uh, said no no to Riceville. Well, Garrett will have it from the baseline as Joyce drew the foul. Into Capacious off the inbounds pass, and she puts it in. Abby Capacious is cutting this way and that way tonight, and she has 13 points. 71 to 35. We are approaching that 30-point lead mark. We'll see if Coach Schwab wants to get some reserves in there, keep everyone safe. Over to the right to Wilburning. 73-35 right now as Barron chases down the ball in the corner and prevents it from going out of bounds. Crosses the lane, dribbles to the left, spins back towards the right, crooks of the help defense. Barron shoots it up, and she'll draw the foul with 440 left. Pretty solid defense there by Capacious and Crooks, both standing there with their arms straight up in the air, but Barron very good inside. What year is Barron's here, Tyler? Well, Jalen Barron is a sophomore, but Joy Barron, who's at the foul line right now, is a senior. So the senior at the line right now going to be very sad to see her career end. She's one of those players that is a great high school player and will be telling her stories later in life and saying, if I didn't have to play 
against Audie Crooks, Molly Joyce, and the Bishop Garrigan Bears, we probably would have went to state. And the three throws up, and it is good. 74-36, and I'll tell you this, or make it 73-36, excuse me. Riceville only has one loss this year, and that was to Class 3A number 9 Osage, and it was by three points. If Riceville had won that game, I'd have to think they would not be playing Garrigan tonight. They may have had a higher seed and avoided Garrigan, but that is a, a what-if question for people to ponder as Montag, three from the near side misses, and Barron rebounds in the lane. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, when the brackets come out, that's how they come out, and there's teams every year that may be better than some of the teams at state that just don't make it because of the way the brackets shake out. Jalen Barron misses the right-hander as Tawani Fair has the offensive rebound of 4-10 left. Riceville this season tying their school record in wins back from the 1982-83 season of 23. Wilberding tries to force one up over Crooks. No, the rebound by Fair, and she floats it up and in. 73-38. This has been an impressive offensive effort as well from Bishop Garrigan. I mean, 73 is a pretty typical point total for them, you know, considering the time left, but Riceville this season... They've had a lot of games holding opponents under 25 points, and that's happened to actually 11 of their 24 games, which makes this outing by Garrigan even more impressive. As Jalen Barron comes the other way, right of the lane, underhands it out to Maurer. Maurer pumps, heads left across the foul line, gets to top the key to Wilberding. They're daring her to shoot, she'll take it, and she'll drill the three-pointer. And she gives a big sigh of relief there as she trots back down the floor. She wishes more of those would fall. And a timeout by Coach Schwab as he's going to empty out the bench with the score 73-41. The Bishop Garrigan seniors are three minutes and 20 seconds away from one more ticket to state. And here come the reserves for the Golden Bears. You have Sasha Aulis coming into the ball game, Regan Murphy, Emmy Bartolo. I see Reese Kemna down there as well for Bishop Garrigan, on a 320 on the clock and a 30-second timeout. But Beanie, once again, the Golden Bears, they've been in this situation so many times. This is, this is old hat for them at this point, and they have followed the exact same script. You know, it is old hat, and so I've watched the players really close on the bench here, but they are giving each other high fives. Capacious and Crooks are smiling big. Joyce, big smiles with Ashlyn Hovey. Zoe Montag right to her left. You know, uh, when you are expected to do something, sometimes it makes that achievement even that much harder. So uh, uh, for the Bears, it may feel like a... A big monkey off their back. We expected them to make it to state. Looks like they're going to clean up this game and make it down there. Probably a big sense of relief, I bet, for some of those girls. So the reserves are in. Alyssa Hoagland was the fifth player coming off the bench for the Golden Bears as Hoagland has it right now. Bouncing it out to the top of the key to Alish. Alish with a nice game. A couple big three-pointers early. Murphy over to the right to Bartolo with 18 on the shot clock. Corner pocket to Kemna. Tried to hand it back off to Bartolo as it was swatted out of bounds. Yeah, and uh, of course, you know, up 73 to 41 with the game well in hand. Coach Schwab has not always put the reserves in at this point, you know, trying to get his starters more time and more, more fitness, but no reason not to play those kids now. And so this is a good opportunity for those reserves. Out to Bartolo, long three-pointers, a little bit short, but the rebound by Hoagland. And who knows what will happen at Wells Fargo, but for the likes of Hoagland and Kemna, this may be the last time they see the court this season, as there's a drive and a block. It was stuffed by Wilberding, but it'll go back to Riceville. Yeah, that's right. I mean, their JV season ended two weeks ago, so they've just been working at practice, getting better at their own game, and having to play defense against the starters. So uh, getting a little reward time here in a sub-state game, that's pretty fun for them. But Garrigan, of course, has a very bright future as well. Even with Crooks, Joyce, and Hovey moving on, there's a lot of talent still here at the Bishop Garrigan uh, girls basketball team. And Murphy got in front of McKenna and knocks the entry pass away with 2.03 left. And you're seeing a lot of that future talent on the floor right now. There's four freshmen plus Murphy, who is a junior. Hoagland sidesteps to the left wing and passes right to Bartolo. Down to 1.53 left. Bartolo, top of the key triple, clangs off the glass. Now, of course, that game's going to be much different without Crooks in the center to anchor it all down. Uh, they're going to be running and gunning and shooting a lot more three-pointers, I believe. Ball is knocked away near half court, and a little scrum for the ball there, and a jump ball near half court as Riceville will keep it. Yeah, those four freshmen down there, plus Reagan Murphy, none of those five are going to back down to anybody when it comes to a, a tie ball situation. They are not going to lose, and here comes another one into the game that will not lose a tie ball situation. Elena Casey, she probably plays as physical as anybody on the Bishop Garrigan roster. The junior wearing number 12 for Bishop Garrigan replacing Aulish with 118 left. Barron off the basketball, Barron into the lane. Barron out to the right. Three-point ball on the way for Morgan Fair, and it's no good as Kemna rebounds with 110 left. 
73-41, Bishop Garrigan is going to Wells Fargo for the fourth year in a row as Kemna tries left wing three, and she swishes it. How about Reese Kemna getting in on the action? A oh, big smile on Reese Kemna's face. I'm glad she took that shot. She was wide open. Why not take it? That's Reese Kemna's second made three-pointer of the season as that'll be a traveling violation as Morgan Fair jumped and landed. And now Riceville's going to empty out the bench. Yeah, and Riceville, you know, this is always sad. There's a lot of tears going on the bench, and there's some hugs going, and, and, a, and uh, you know, only one team gets to end the season on a win. So it's uh, just part of high school sports and learning the ropes. The yeah. Riceville seniors left it all on the floor this season. Madison Maurer, Joy Barron both checking out, Riley McKenna as well. And now this will be it. Bishop Garrigan has the shot clock off. Game clock's down to 19 as Bartolo dribbles near half court. The Garrigan student section, they've been great all season. And they're going to have to be great down at Wells Fargo Arena coming up on Wednesday night as Bartolo will burn the final nine seconds away. Bartolo near half court with the final five seconds. For the fourth year in a row, Bishop Garrigan is heading back to Wells Fargo Arena. This unbelievable run by a great group of girls is continuing. 76-41, the final score. The Golden Bears continue the dance. They're going to Wells Fargo for the fourth year in a row, and the dreams of back-to-back -back state titles are still alive. So the teams will shake hands near half court. Riceville will end the season at 23 and two. Bishop Garrigan now 23 and one. And they will continue to play three games away for a state championship as the Golden Bears are so close once again. We'll take a quick timeout, come back and wrap it up next here on Home Country and the Algona Radio YouTube live stream. Tournament sports coverage being brought to you by Nutri and Ag Solutions of Irvington and Laverne for all your crop input needs. Snap on tools, the most valued tool storage solutions in the world. Sportsman's Corner, your power sports headquarters. Can Am and Honda side by sides, ATVs and motorcycles. West Bendy, a curated boutique of specialty shops in downtown Algona. Carol Implement of Laverne, serving the area farming community for over 50 years. Advanced Interior Care, professional home and business cleaning of carpet, ceramic floors, upholstery, and window treatments. Algona Hearing Center, better living through better hearing. All bringing you this broadcast on the radio. Welcome to Premier Pizza, the place to go when you're looking for delicious pizza and Mexican selections, all in a fun, casual, and accommodating setting. They want to thank their customers for coming to their restaurant in the best way they know how, by making sure that your experience there is the best it can possibly be. They never forget that each person has a choice in where to dine and feel privileged each time you choose Premier. Come by Premier Pizza and prepare to be amazed. Four sponsors bringing you this tournament broadcast. Stone and Steel, offering top-of-the-line customer service for your next countertop remodel or new home build. Emeralds, featuring your favorite steaks and seafood, a great salad bar, and more. Good Samaritan Society of Algona, senior housing and services rooted in God's love. Schindler Lawn Care and Landscaping, 515-320-3840 or schindlerlawncare at gmail.com. Marceau's Golden Harvest Seed Sales, Jim Marceau. Algona Dairy Queen. Enjoy your favorite DQ treats. They're open for the season. Semco International, matting by design. All boosters bringing you this broadcast. At Iowa State Bank, many of their employees use the skills they learned as student athletes to help their customers succeed. That's why they provide recognition for special accomplishments like playing in the state tournament as the proud sponsor of state tournament t-shirts. Last year, they proudly sponsored t-shirts for the Algona Bulldogs and the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears as they made several state tournament appearances. Good luck to our student athletes as they compete on the field and in the classroom from Iowa State Bank, helping students succeed. FDIC. High school sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio, brought to you by these boosters. Billy Joe's Bar and Grill, burgers and steaks cooked to perfection, along with chops, chicken, and seafood. Capacious Brothers Incorporated, Pioneer Seed. Advanced Drainage Systems, Mike Arndorfer, our reason is water. Lickers Garage Opener Service and Appliance Repair. Farmers Co-op of Otteson and Algona, offering Kent show feeds for all your livestock projects. Flipside in Laverne, open seven days a week, dine in or carry out. Tigus Chiropractic, your freedom of pain is in their hands. Bring you this game on Hometown and Home Country Radio. At Chemna Auto Center, they understand that you have no shortage of options when it comes to purchasing or servicing your car. They're your hometown dealer for new GM, Ford, and Chrysler makes and models. Plus, they also offer an extensive selection of pre-owned vehicles. 
serving you with a dedicated sales and finance team, along with world-class service technicians that are passionate about keeping your ride in top shape. Visit their showrooms today for an experience you deserve. Chemna Auto Center in Algona. In our world today, do you often feel like no one's listening anymore? Calling a business means talking to a machine? Websites don't list phone numbers? If you're like me, I often feel this way. Hi, I'm Jim Black, an agent at PMC Advantage Insurance Services in Algona. At PMC Advantage, we will have a real person on the phone to talk to you. Face-to-face -face communication is not out of style. We can help make important decisions to protect what you have worked so hard for. We want to get to know you, so please stop by our offices in Algona, Burt, West Bend, Corwith, Swayze, or Garner for a good old one-on-one -on -one conversation. PMC Advantage Insurance Services, a pharmacist mutual insurance company. The physical therapy team at Kasuth Regional Health Center is ready for you this season. No one wants to battle pain or injury at any time during their athletics career. We specialize in the prevention and treatment of athletic injuries. Working closely with the doctors and healthcare staff, we take a team approach to create a plan personalized for you. Whether you want to ease the pain, prevent a sports injury, or recover from one, the experts at CareHC are here to help. Best of luck to all area athletes this season. We'll be cheering for you. As we come back here on Home Country Radio, KLGZ Algona, Bishop Garrigan is on to state for the fourth year in a row as their dream of back-to-back -back titles is alive and well. Golden Bears defeating Riceville tonight by a final count of 76-41. I'm Tyler Lance alongside my partner, Beanie Bodie. Quick update for you here on what's going on on our sister station before we wrap up this game as right now it's Algona 62, Humboldt 61 with four minutes left in the, or make that two minutes left in the fourth quarter there. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that game for you here, get you any updates as pertinent going forward. But let's focus back on this gym as Bishop Garrigan once again they get the job done they do it in dominant fashion this was a very good Riceville team and a Riceville team that was even improved from last year Beanie I don't know if you remember this but last year Riceville went 22 and 3 they had a big improvement had one of their best seasons in school history and I said great year by Riceville it's going to be hard for them though to win 22 games again and they proved me wrong they won 23 this year and improved from last year but once again we've talked about the Golden Bears being improved as well and they showed it tonight 76 41 final score uh, beating a very very good Riceville team today well well, Tyler, it takes a big man to admit when he was wrong, but I do remember you saying that it's going to be hard for Ricefield to do it again, and they did that on the strength of those two sisters. Boy, were they incredible all the way, the Barons, and uh, also you got some great help from Wilberding and some great shooting from Maurer. And uh, they got some energy over there on the Riceville bench, and I'm, I'm sure they're going to be a good program continuing. Hats off to them. And the only thing that they did wrong was get in the same bracket as the Bishop Garrigan Bears two years in a row, and that's just the way it shakes out. And the Bears, you know, <clears throat> we get so used to seeing these dominant wins by the Bears that I never feel safe with any lead because uh, we've seen close games in the past down that state tournament, but, boy, they were not going to be denied as Crooks, Joyce, and Hovey are taking a picture with the state championship qualifying banner right now and once you get a little taste of that state tournament you just want to get down there over and over and over again and they're going to pass that message on to these freshmen and uh, come back next year even without those stellar seniors I think this Bishop Garrigan Bear team is still going to be uh, a tough out in any tournament and has a shot at it again next year but of course that's a long ways away but tonight great game played by the Bears great adjustments uh, good adjustments defensively good adjustments on offense and uh, just a stellar game all around Round. No doubt about it. And once you get that first taste of Wells Fargo action, it's like coffee. Everyone's addicted to coffee. You just need another taste. You need it every year, year after year. And these seniors for Bishop Garrigan, Hovey, Crooks, and Joyce, they have always gone to Wells Fargo Arena, and that'll be the case here in their senior year as well. As after tonight, it'll be eight teams left. They'll obviously reseed everybody and get the matchup set. But Bishop Garrigan, they're going to be the number one seed. They'll play the number eight seed on Wednesday at some point. And of course, we'll keep you up to date on that as we know it. But scoring numbers look like this. Leading scores were Audie Crooks with 30 points, Molly Joyce with 14, Abby Capacious with 13 for the Golden Bears. Riceville had Joy Barron lead the way with 14. Madison Maurer had a nice game with nine in this one. Scoring by quarter looked like this. Bishop Garrigan won every quarter. Golden Bears had a 21 to eight scoring advantage in the first, 15 to 12 in the second, 24 to 15 in the third, and 16 to six in the fourth as they move on to state and win game number 23 of the season. So Beanie, 
We'll see you at Wells Fargo Arena, my friend. Can I catch a ride, Tyler? I think you can catch a ride. Okay. We can make that happen. All right. Well, I will see you down there with our media passes. We get front side seats, court side seats again? Court side seats, best seat in the house. Oh, well, that is well worth all the time you put in, Tyler. That's a great uh, event that the Girls Athletic Union puts on down there. We're very fortunate to get a go. Thanks for everyone supporting the Bishop Garrick and Golden Bears. It's uh, always a fun season, year in and year out. Well, congratulations once again to the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears. Going to state four years in a row is incredibly special, and the possibility of a second straight title remains. Also, big congratulations to the Riceville Wildcats. Back-to-back -back years making it to the regional final. That is definitely an accomplishment, and they will certainly miss their seniors tonight that we saw a lot of with Joy Barron, Madison Maurer, as well as Riley McKenna graduating from the program. Uh, Morgan Fair as well. Don't want to forget about her. So, Riceville, they'll graduate four seniors. They'll try to reload and come back next year. And Bishop Garrigan, they'll get back to practice, and they will play on Wednesday at some point. Well, folks, we'll give you a quick update here before we wrap up. Algona is playing Humboldt right now as the Bulldogs have a three-point lead of under a minute left. So tune on over to our other YouTube stream going right now, Algona against Humboldt, and hear Brian Wilson and Greg Stewart on the call as that game finishes out. That'll come down to the end of the fourth quarter. So uh, that's going on on our sister station, 92.7 FM. Meanwhile, here on Home Country Radio, we will wrap it up for tonight. For my partner, Beanie Bodie, for all our great sports club sponsors and video streaming sponsors as well, I'm Tyler Lance. This is been a home country radio sports production final score bishop garrigan 76 and riceville 41.